Welcome everyone, how are we? Welcome to another Friday Night Live as I'm going to be taking you through prop firms. Are they a bubble? What are the changes that are coming up? Some really important things that you need to know about as well. Answering the questions about Rewired, about the launch date Welcome that's coming everyone. up. how are we? Welcome to another Friday. So where is everybody tuning in from tonight? One of the most important questions that we get asked is about prop firms. Are they sustainable? What do we need to look out for? I'm going to cover everything, and especially about chart patterns as well, because of course, people have views on how to trade the markets, and people often say, you know, I, I tried trading patterns, and I just don't think that they work. Well, let's see. We'll go over it. I'm confident by the end of this episode, you will actually understand that you probably trade patterns yourself, and you don't even know it. So welcome, we're gonna give it a couple of minutes. I'm gonna dive straight into the important parts. I'm curious, anyone here, you're a funded trader or are you looking to get funded? Yes, welcome, welcome everyone. So we've got South Africa, Nambia, love it, USA, welcome. Good evening, good evening. I'm doing phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Q3 is a success as a whole. We've had a lot of funded success recently. And it's not a coincidence because we know our position. Again, it goes back to patterns. We know where we are positioned. Took a lovely trade on Pound Aussie. Took a break even on EuroCAD. Missed the trade on CAD Yen, which was a phenomenal position. Took a 5.5 on Kiwi Yen the prior week. Just across the board, everything is moving forward. And we just had someone pass on our in-house fund, so RC. She passed on the in-house fund today, so massive congratulations to RC again. One of our most committed students, not a coincidence as to why she is where she is. Welcome those of you just joining us. So prop firms, talk to me. Is it a bubble? What do you guys think? Well, I'm going to explain something to you. So I'm sure you've probably seen recently that there's now a trend for no time limits, right? You've probably seen that. But the question you've got to ask yourself, who is that good for? I personally don't believe that prop firms are going, going away anytime soon. I think prop firms are an incredible stepping stone, so I want to make that clear. What I do believe is that you should be slowly but surely building up your own personal capital as well. You don't just want to be relying on these things because things could go bust. It's the reason why we have our own in-house fund for our students for that extra protection, knowing that when you scale up, you've got something a bit more personal and you've got more, more structure there, more safety there. So I always advise people to be able to get access to that. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm not in the Falcon community, so how can I access that? Well, there's a new way you can potentially do that through the Rewired program. So through Rewired, through Rewired, we know that the people that have got the right training and the right mentality, we can vet that because think about it. We don't want any person trading our fund. We want the people that have the right mindset, not gonna be just doing assessment after assessment. We don't allow that nonsense. So if you are trading a successful strategy and you want access to our fund, that is what I would say the closest gateway for you to have access to it. Because it's very important that your reputation of our numbers stays the same. And that's really, really key for us. But more so to the point, without digressing, when it comes to these funding firms, and I'm looking at, right, look at the shift. Bear in mind, from day one, we gave people a year. So we've already been in line with this anyway. Because we understand, listen, 30 days, what are you going to do in 30 days? You might fluke a few things, but you're more than likely to deviate from your plan. You're more than likely going to lose your funding. That's kind of given. Why do you guys and girls think that prop firms have now been pressured into following along with this no time limit? That's the question for you. Why do you think they're doing it? I'm curious. I'll give you my take on it. I'm all for prop firms. Build them up, build your accounts up, do what you need to do, but have a game plan. But more importantly, what you've got to think about is my Forex funds release the stats on quite a frequent basis. And they've told you categorically that people that are in and out the markets really quickly, in and out the markets within six hours, they lose their accounts after a big withdrawal. People are not keeping their capital, right? So they're blowing it very, very quickly. And you can see within the numbers from psychological issues. 
So if they've already told you that and you thought, wow, I turn a blind eye to that, maybe it's just because I'm not technically competent. Bearing in mind, we never ever advocate for poor technicals. I think people get confused with this. We give a very, very strong line on psychology. And there's a reason for that because I personally believe it's the catalyst because there's there's millions of technical traders out there and people are still not making money. So it's not my opinion. This is just logical, rational thinking that it can't all be everyone's incompetent, right? Because there's traders that have traded for years. However, my Forex funds have told you, look, these are the people that are making money. It's a very small percentage of people. There's under a 1% chance that you'll be paid out. Then they're now comfortable with doing no time limits. I'm talking prop firms as a whole and everyone's gonna kind of come on. So I think, who is it good for? Well, it's not good for the people that have a broken mindset anyway. Because if you're competent technically, you might get a certain amount. But guess what? You're going to blow your account just how you've been blowing your account on funds that give you six months or give you a little bit longer. So that's not going to change. Will we see a change in the numbers as a whole? Probably a little bit, but it's not going to change too much. Because fundamentally, there's a problem with your mindset. It's still broken. And if you don't fix that, you're going to be in the same position. So imagine now you're a prop firm. And I, and I really want you to listen to this. And this is so key. Imagine now you're a prop firm and let me know if you guys can see my screen by the way or if it's just full screen at this point but imagine now you're a you're a prop firm and if you're a prop firm right now and that you're giving people the opportunity to come through with assessments let's say the average person that comes through spends with you i don't know 4k a year because they lose they lose they keep applying they keep applying do you not think that if they've just opened that up to like no time limit a year, whatever it is, like a longer time frame, right? If they've given you that amount of time, that means that they're comfortable with you just having one assessment. So how much money do they lose? Millions, millions, right? So don't you think it would be more logical to suggest they've run the data, they've looked at it and said, it doesn't matter if we give these guys one year, two years, 25 years, doesn't matter. Give them all the time you could desire. Because guess what? In 30 days, they're going to fuck it up anyway. And they know that. So what's the solution? The solution is making sure that you have the right type of mindset that doesn't display that same destructive behavior. Now, does this mean that mindset trumps the technicals? People get confused about this. I am an advocate for technical analysis. I love technical analysis. I'm going to show you that. I believe that you should be a highly skilled, competent trader. I'm not blasé when it comes to technical analysis. When it comes to our strategy, I believe in knowing it like the back of your hand. I actually believe a lot of psychological issues can be fixed by being a competent trader. However, I don't believe it's the catalyst that's going to take you to trade six figures, multiple six figures, and sustain it. Because if that was the case, you're telling me all these thousands and thousands of accounts they're all incompetent traders. Don't you think it would be more logical to suggest that they have psychological issues? I mean, run the data. You can see they make mistakes from psychology. So what is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to fuse them together. It's to be an incredibly technical trader from however you're trading. And then it's to fuse the right type of winning mentality that is designed to think like a profitable trader. That's the fusion that you want. Not... I've got an incredible mindset and I've got a really average understanding with technicals and then, I'm, and then I'll just make money. No, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that you be a phenomenal technical trader, but just stop prioritizing it over mindset because where has that got you exactly? What, a payout here and there? But guess what? You're in the same position. You'll be in the same loop over and over. So it doesn't matter whether they give you 50 years. If you don't develop the right mentality, you'll be in the same position. Why do you think, because remember, Rewide is not just for Falcon traders, Rewide is for the entire industry. Why do you why do you think that traders that are trading different systems, whether it's SMC, etc., that have come in and conveniently scaled up once they've gone through Rewide correctly and given it a few months to actually apply the methods to be able to trade calmly under pressure? What you think is a coincidence that that happens, that they're getting to certain levels because they're technically decent enough but they're always always at a ceiling, always at a cap. What you think they just coincidentally went through that thoroughly and now the money starts to scale up? No, because psychology is psychology. And what we've got is the recipe. We have the recipe to help you think like a profitable trader. And that is in three wide. Now, of course, we've got the launch coming out very soon, which is in... I mean, like six six days. So beyond rewide, which is the layer two, that is coming out in six days. If you get in now before the price goes up, 
you will have that locked in. It's not just about this one more caveat set because I just want to answer these questions really quickly and move on to the technicals. When it comes to the price going up, it's not about the price going up at, within itself. If you've got it locked in now, so if you're fortunate you've already locked in Rewired, you've got access to this by default. So you're grandfathered in, you're not paying anything extra. It's a long-term investment in yourself and that's why you're rewarded for that and rewarded for that loyalty. When the price goes up, right, anything extra that's added, if you've not locked it in beforehand, there will be an extra fee on top of that. So it's not just you locking in the price now for the price going up, you're locking in the future value. So the reason why people that got in even cheaper than the price right now, they've seen the value even more because as you know who I am and what I stand for in this space, I'm always gonna keep adding value. Bearing in mind things that we're adding for Beyond Rewired, it's very funding specific. So if you're a funded trader, then you need to be involved. So link in the description, you want any details, the date is the date, you need to get in before the 20th, before midnight and the opportunity is there. Don't come up asking after, you need to have these things in place. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So let's move on to the technicals. Welcome anyone just joining us right now. I admit my psychology isn't that 90%, still weak, believing one would help me not to trade. Again, let's see how I'm not a profit. Well, the thing is, it's not about the percentage. I, I move more towards, I mean, I say 90, 10, as in 90% psychology, 10% technicals. That's more of just a, an overall term. What I believe is the actual term is more 80-20. 80% 80 psychology, 10% your actual system, and 10% your trading plan. Because listen, you can have great technicals, but if you've got a really poor trading plan, that might encourage you to trade poorly anyway. So I think if we was to get a real number, it would be more 80-10-10. But you know that overwhelmingly, it's your mentality. The things that have kept you out of positions, it's not your technical analysis, is it? A lot of you have traded for years, like you know your stuff, but you just don't pull the trigger in the right moments because your mindset's all over the place. You take profit too early. It's nothing technical about it. It's all mindset-based, fear-based. And when you can learn to reprogram the way that you think, you stop doing that shit and you find, oh, conveniently, now I'm making money. Now I'm holding my trades for longer. Why do you think that is? Your current belief system isn't serving you. It's as simple as that. So let's take a look. Another question we get, right, do we trade chart patterns? Everyone in here, how are you currently trading? What type of style are you trading? And let me know that you can all see, can you all see Aussie dollar on the screen if you give me a why? Should be able to see that now. You are welcome. Yeah, so you should be able to see that now. So the question we get asked, right? Can you trade chart patterns successfully? My question is for you, do they work in the first place? Well, I just wanna show you a couple of things. The reason why people get confused with chart patterns because they think that, well, don't trade patterns because patterns are subjective and one person might think it's a flag and someone else will think it's a head and shoulders and one person might think it's an expanding and one person might think it's this. The reason as to why people get confused is because they lack positioning. It's not the pattern. Listen, you can take a pattern from anywhere and of course that could be subjective. But if you're positioned with a high time frame narrative, that is very different. That's where people get confused. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. Because what you've got to understand is that I don't care how you trade, you're trading patterns and you don't even know it. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are, I don't know, looking at a zone, for example. It, it, I'm going to be vague here, but to just demonstrate the point. Let's say the market sells off and for whatever reason, you're looking to set your order here and you're looking for a continuation of that. You might say, I don't trade patterns, I trade supply and demand or, or some sort of other variation. Then my question is, are you not still waiting for a repeat pattern? Well, quite, the answer is yes, right? You're still looking for repetitive things that happen and you're going, right, once this happens, I do this. I wait for this or I set a limit order here. Whatever it is, you're still doing a pattern. So you can escape it all you want. You can say, I don't trade patterns because tra patterns are you know, bear flags. And look, this bigger bear flag, look, it didn't work. Right, that means chart patterns exposed, they don't work. Again, context, 
context is important. So you're trading patterns within the market, whether you like it or not, you can't escape patterns. We are creatures of habit, which means there's always gonna be patterns in the markets. Some of the top traders in the world trade simple patterns. So I don't know where this elitist mindset comes from, thinking that patterns don't work. Okay, so why is it that institutional traders, and even people like Stephen Goldstein, right, that have spoken at our conference, why do they advocate for patterns then? So are you saying that these people are wrong then? So when you're saying, I'm oh, sorry to break it to you, but patterns don't work. So you're basically saying that these institutional people that have traded on the floors, that are trading multi-millions, and have traded and coached people trading millions, that use structures and patterns, they just may use them differently to what you've been taught. Are they all wrong then, right? So these are all fools you're basically saying. It's nonsense. Patterns exist, other strategies work, it's not about one strategy better than the other. It's about your interpretation and your experience, which is why when you're in Falcon, you're not learning about a bull flag or a bear flag. You're learning about the experience of how I interpret the patterns. That's where the value is. So for example, someone that went on Google was like, right, it's a bear flag, so let me trade this. Oh, that didn't work. Well, let me just take you back to something. Why wouldn't have we gotten involved in this position? Bar the fact that there was CPI coming out and on a funded account, you wouldn't want to be taking that because of slippage. If we go down to the lower time frame, why wouldn't we take that? Because someone who's a novice who doesn't understand, they would literally go, well, look, this pattern didn't play out. So let's, let's say you set your order here, you add your stop above there, right? You got tagged in and then you got wiped out by CPI and then you took a loss, maybe a bit of slippage. Someone who's inexperienced would mark that down and go, see, look, it doesn't work. Again, let me just take you back to Literally, this is a Sunday market breakdown. So I'm going to play for you a very uh, small clip. This is a fast bank scenario, 100%. So you've got us going to watch. So have a look. What am I waiting for here? And if you look at take that, four hour, that would be beautiful. So again, there is a lot of... So this, the first flag, right? As a prime example. So someone who would short this here they don't have an understanding. Now, of course, I've gone into detail is why I said this is 100% a first flag scenario. I'm not gonna play the whole clip because again, we'll be here for a while. However, you can understand, what was we looking for? We was looking for a first flag scenario. Now, the reason why we wouldn't have taken this trade is because CPI was just about to come out on a funded account. If you was gonna take it on your private capital, for example, this to me would have been a typical entry that you set your order and you just would have never got triggered in. And in a rare chance, maybe you got tagged in by a spread. But even again, traders lose, no one's perfect. But you see the concept here. Someone could mark this on and go, right, it didn't work, but why didn't it work? I didn't, I didn't tell you to take the trade there in the first place. And you can see that from the recording. I'll give you another, another example. Again, because what I'm trying to display here is interpretation we take CAD Yen. This was a mistrade for me. And this, by the way, was absolute phenomenal, phenomenal position, right? As you can see, if you would have held the full way, I reckon roughly you would have got out about 16, 16 ish percent. Now, as you can see here, right? We're gonna go back to our entry around this area. So what you're seeing now is this. I want to cast your eyes to this before it happens. We'll just get rid of that for now. What can you see? We'll just play that out. If it's a scoop like this, it's more likely going to reject and then formulate a continuation and that can sell off and never... So what am I demonstrating here? Because of this scoop, because of the nature of how this pattern is, the interpretation of this pattern, someone else could go, it's just a flag. It's not just a flag. You don't understand what you're talking about. You have no experience on the level of depth of pattern identification when you get into the nitty gritty details and positioning. So when we talk about this, what I'm displaying is because of this sequence, it's less likely for mechanicalistic reasons, right? There's a mechanical approach to this. It's less likely to give a third touch. It's actually very unlikely. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a continuation within that. So one, two, three. Right, and this is the type of so entry. I will pay attention to that on the lower time frame, just in case there is any there's your entry right there. And then what have we got here? This. If we get this scoop, what are we looking for? So again, this is just in the content. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just following structure. I'm just trying to explain something to you. So I missed this, but I was in a meeting. It was very, very, I mean, it was a, sh a short window where I could have been able to get it. But for whatever reason, I missed the trade. I move on. Regardless, I still was able to bank on other pairs. But this, as a minimum, would have got me, I would say, around 12 12 and a half percent. So this is, I would put as a mistrade, around 12-ish percent. On maximum potential, probably would have been about 18 and a half to 19. 
So if you are obsessed with your risk to reward, there you go. Again, 10 pip stop, not ridiculous stop, it's about positioning. So how do the patterns not work exactly? So again, chart patterns are retail, retail's always on the wrong side. Who is this? Because I can show you this on a daily. Retail's not moving this. So you're telling me that retail is moving all of this, right? It's not the bigger players stepping in from the high time positioning. So if I don't have a crystal ball and I can see these things ahead of time, how do patterns not work exactly? And you can go back to my webinars years and see these things ahead of time. So I think it's absolute nonsense when people say chart patterns don't work. What they do is they cherry pick an isolated scenario and go, right, look at this flag, look at this flag. And I'm about to show you the next part, what they don't factor in positioning so what we're doing is that we're not actually taking patterns and going right we trade patterns or we trade trend lines so it's a really a blase statement to make when you look from the outside so you don't know what you're talking about you go right do you trade trend lines actually very rarely we're not trading the trend line we'll use them as a guide so i'll show you in a nutshell what we're looking for let's say we was looking for a range and we're looking for cad yen for a sell for example what we're looking at is the higher time frame positioning. So last week, this is how we would use it. There's no trend line involved. What we're looking at is simple candle shape formations. We're looking at the bigger players, where are they stepping in? They're stepping in here, right? So we identify the bigger players stepping into the market. What are we looking to fill? We're looking for price action to fill this area to mimic this structure to the left. So our first initial target for this week would be for price action to fill that area. And then what do we get? We get price action, fill that area. Why? So we filled 90% of this so far, which is more than good enough. And within that, we've then utilized technically a flag to take a trade, right? So there's a lot of people that took the CAD yen trade. I missed it, unfortunately, is what it is. But there's a lot of other people that took this in the community on funded capital, on their personal capital, or on demo if they've just started. It doesn't matter. The whole point is to say patterns don't work is ludicrous in isolation yes maybe if you're looking at what's the probability of this flag playing out again foolish understanding what we're looking at is that where did the bigger players step into the market and then what we do is we work our way down to the lower time frames from the daily positioning the four hour the one hour and yes will we use a pattern to identify an entry of course but it doesn't mean that we're saying patterns are more important than market structure or patterns are more important than the bigger players or the banks stepping into the market. No, we're in line with that. We're riding the wave of the banks. So how could we be on the wrong side of the market if we follow the money? Answer me that. How could we be on the wrong side of the market when we literally follow where the bigger players step in and ride the wave? What we do is where people are confused, they think you trade patterns. No, we use it to identify our entries. That's it. Simple, and this has never been anything different. So it's usually the trolls from a distance that don't know what the fuck they're on about. They just see Google chart patterns and think, yeah, that, that's how you must trade. Or we trade trend lines. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That would be the equivalent of going, this is potentially a trend line. Do you really think that we would buy this? I'll give you an example. If we're going to go the trend line logic, technically, one, two, three, four, five, right, we've broken out, we've retested. Technically, we're going to buy this then. Would anyone in here, Falcon, think we're going to buy this? Of course not, because it'd be foolish. It makes no sense at all. What does make sense is the high time frame positioning. And as you can see all the way through, again, another entry in here. I'll bring you to a recent trade. This is where I believe people have got confused. They think just because something looks like something else, therefore it's that. So for example, they'll go, there's an ascending channel at a double top. And even though it does play out, it's great. When we're looking at this structure, we'll go, well, this is the same. It's not the same. It's got a completely different positioning. This one was a short-term sell that we was looking to see if it breaks this low. If it holds this low, then we're potentially reversing aggressively up to the top, predicted way in advance. The sell to the left, which is the same type of channel, right, but positioned differently, is positioned in, look, in this area, higher time frame area, in which that you've got multiple areas where the bigger players, if you wanna call it a zone, whatever you wanna call it, have stepped into the market. So what we're not using is going, oh, this pattern is more important than that. No, no that's not what we're saying. We're identifying our understanding of these structures to go, look, this is a one, 
one, two, three drive. So what you'll usually find in these valuable areas, the market will give you a one, two, three drive before it dumps off like this. This is where the bigger moves. So although this structure here might look similar to this structure here, if you don't have an understanding, you'll go, well, this one kind of worked and this one really did work. Again, you still don't understand what you're on about. And the reason as to why is that you've got no context behind any of it. If you did want the context, you would learn the strategy. You wouldn't point fingers from afar. So I wanted to clear that up is that it's absolute nonsense for someone to say that chart patterns don't work. If some of the biggest, the biggest traders would literally school you in a minute and they would laugh at your idea and your ideology of thinking that you trade like a bank on trading view ridiculous so i wanted to address that here and there because we still get this come up on a regular basis and it's probably for a good reason you probably asked the question because you do see i'll give you a bit of credit you do see a very small glimpse on youtube it's the reason for that because we prioritize our members we prioritize making sure they've got the most up-to-date education so they've got the right framework they've got the right mindset and they can scale up on our in-house fund if they see fit that's our priority. We want to take care of our members and nothing wrong with that. So that is it in a nutshell. Chart patterns exposed. I mean, you you tell me who's on the wrong side because again, we were waiting, waiting for the break, right? Get people caught on the wrong side, drops out, forms the same pattern that we look for over and over again. Another one, another one here. That was a mistrade for me here. Then what do you get? You get a break of the low. And how do we break the low? Inverse head and shoulders, continuation, aggressive move back up again another continuation and it's heading for the highs again guys this is simple it's nothing complicated i don't know why the industry has done this really really bizarre all strategies work to a degree don't get me wrong there are some strategies that i think are absolute garbage and encourage a lot of emotional volatility however there's lots of systems that work even if you are going to go down the SMC or whatever you want to call it. I'm fine with that. I don't care how you're trading. What I care about is this idea that you think that it's a knowledge gap issue. That as long as you know this, this, and this, because I'll tell you what, do you know what the actual issue is? I'm going to address it right now. The reason why there's such an allure about wanting to trade like a bank, the first and obvious one is that you feel like, well, yeah, I'm trading like a bank, so surely uh, I'm in the, the right money. I get that part of it. The second part of it actually comes from fear you've got to remember why did you start trading you started trading to make money and you understood at the beginning that trading is not guaranteed you understood there's a probability element i think we could all agree with that so you know probabilities you could take a really high quality setup it might just not work it might just not play out you wouldn't then go that doesn't work you would understand right if i take this a certain amount of times out of 10 for example or a larger sample size it will work so i'll still take that setup so why does trading like a bank lure you in so much? What you actually fear is being wrong. You can't hack being wrong. And because you can't hack taking a trade and it not working out, you need something to blame or you need something to just mask that gap. So rather than focusing on your psychology, you believe that a knowledge gap is going to fix that for you. So if you know more about the markets, therefore you can lose less. And you can protect yourself. And funny enough, what you'll find with these strategies anyway, people end up with a 50% strike rate. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me these people don't end up with a 50% strike rate. But the very reason or the very premise that you go there is that you believe you're going to get something absolute. And then you find out very quickly that you were wrong. Nothing is absolute. All strategies experience drawdown. And you're back at square one again. You still can't scale up on funding. Psychologically broken. You're in the same position. This is the point I'm making. So the reason why we have such a strong stance on psychology is not to undervalue technicals because I believe technicals are so crucial and many people would get a lot further in life in trading if they had a better technical understanding. However, it's only going to take you so far. And I'll tell you why. If you had the most switched on technical trader on the planet, but they had low self-esteem and they were anxious and they couldn't control their emotions... Would you trust that person with your life savings? Answer that question. Imagine you find that this person is switched on, knows the market like the back of their hand, knows every tick of the market you could possibly imagine, and on demo has a pretty high strike rate. Would you knowingly know they've got really, really bad self-image so they don't think much of themselves, they're not that confident, they lack a bit of organization, they're emotionally 
all over the place so they're very volatile when it comes to losing positions and they're just generally anxious people would you happily give them your life savings knowing it's one of the best traders in terms of technical analysis but you know emotionally they're all over the place do you think that would be a recipe for success or do you think you would be a bit anxious yourself thinking or i wonder if that person's going to uh, you know derail themselves after four or five losses in a row are they going to still be able to stick to their edge that they know so well or do you think they'll probably blow the account and lose all your life savings what do you think you intuitively know something feels wrong that they should be able to learn how to be calm under pressure and that's what produces results you can't ignore it forever an edge is nothing more than an indication of a high probability of one thing happening over the other there you go simple there's no absolutes there is there right you have an edge and in order to perform the edge who has to execute on it so unless you've got a robot version of you unless you've cloned yourself right you've got some ai robot version of you and even then that's a topic for another conversation ai is only going to give you an opinion anyway so you don't need to worry about that but it's very simple you still need to execute on it you still need to make decisions if it was 100 percent mechanical and there was never emotion in it i would say yeah that makes 100 percent sense then psychology kind of isn't important because you know you just follow the edge but you gotta think about it why millions of traders still cannot do that why is that because you're a human you're going to experience emotion and your goal is to not have no emotion unless you want to be a psychopath your goal is to learn how to be better and deal with your emotions better trade calmly under pressure be more emotionally in control the more mo emotionally in control you are you trust yourself to actually let your edge play out so you don't second guess yourself when you need to take the trade if you've taken three losses in a row someone who's not in control will be all over the place and they won't pull the trigger on the fourth trade that would have offset the actual losses and they'll be kicking themselves thinking why didn't i take that trade because i was trading from a position of fear why was i trading from a position of fear because I don't believe in myself in the first place and now I'm doubting the strategy. People would doubt their strategy after four losses in a row. Can you believe that? People that have tested and simulated an environment of let's say 100 trades will doubt themselves after four losses in a row. Why do you think that is? It's nothing technical, is it? They've all, they're have they the ones that have proved it to themselves that the system works, yet they will still have heightened emotions. I don't blame them. The average trader doesn't know how to regulate their emotions so i'm not shocked by this when people say there's under a one percent chance of being paid out on my forex fund i'm not confused by that statement i get it because people don't have the right framework to be successful in their own mind so now you understand why we built rewind you understand why we put this in place because it's not just about uh, can i afford to buy rewind the question is can you afford to miss out on making lots of money by not having the right mindset that's the better question you should be asking yourself because otherwise you'll just be in the same position guys you you really you got to take yourself seriously look at this euro dollar patterns right it's always convenient what you'll find is that people that don't like this idea of structure patterns whatever they'll always pick the ones in which that it doesn't work out but conveniently, when the market does move in this direction, which we was anticipating a break of this high, it's not about this pattern, but this was a good indication that this was going to be a breakout to the upside. We saw this a mile off. They will ignore that and then go, yeah, yeah, patterns don't work. So why is this moving then? Why are we breaking out? Now, it's not about that the pattern itself is making it do that. That's not what I'm saying. That's where the confusion comes in. I'm, I have a trading idea that price action is heading towards this high this would make it even more simple this high to take out this high because there's liquidity there for example if you want to speak that language and i'm looking for the price action to take that high out and break that high and break back in and once it breaks back in i'm looking for a pattern to confirm that idea it's not the pattern is like right the pattern's making the market or it's moving the market i don't believe that i never have what i'm saying is we use it to identify this is the area where we're probably going to look for sales and this is what that would look like and here is our entry point so you're all looking for patterns you can just call it whatever you want but it's a reoccurring thing that happens that you're trying to identify to gain an edge with your system and i think we've lost that over a period of time we're more focused on trying to compare strategies versus looking internally and going right am i actually built to trade this money 
or have I got some issues that I need to deal with? Simple as that. And I've gone off on a bit of a tangent here, but this is super, super important that you get your head in the game because over the next five months, at the end of the year, all you need to be thinking about is where where are you at? All these people comparing different strategies. At the end of the day, if you're moving forward, do you care? If you're trading support and resist, I don't care if you're trading support and resistance. You could laugh at someone and say, right, they're trading support and resistance. And even though I do think there are a, uh, many things there that actually put you at a disadvantage if you just traded support and resistance. However, even support and resistance with a really, really strong understanding of higher time frame positioning with a great mindset, you'll still make money. And you'll probably still make more money than someone who is really switched on technically but has a really, really bad mindset. That's not the recipe. What you really want, the ultimate recipe, is something has a really profitable edge that you know like the back of your hand so you're really competent at your technical analysis and understanding. You're really competent at your understanding of the higher time frame narrative and then you've got a robust bulletproof mindset to carry that out. That is a recipe for so much success on these funded accounts, building out your personal account. That will change your life. If you can do that, you'll be in a good position. If you don't work on the mindset part, it will come back to haunt you. Any questions, feel free. Why don't you share your all the watch lists on the newsletter? Because that is for our members. That gives you a bit of a snippet, gives you a bit of an insight, teaches you for free a little bit of understanding, a little bit of learning. But at one point, you've got to commit to yourself, right? You have to put skin in the game in order to be successful in pretty much anything. Welcome from Bangladesh. Love to see it. And Aussie Dollar, just to leave you with this. And let me know in the comments after what kind of takeaways that you've taken from this. And to clarify, I don't I don't believe that prop firms would be a bubble. I have nothing against them. I think they're great. I think your utilization of them should be clear. And they've literally just told you in advance psychology is one of the most important things because they're happy for you to have no time limit which is basically saying we know you're going to fail because you won't prioritize your psychology and you'll just think that as long as I just keep doing these assessments, I'll get a payout. They know you're going to do that behavior. Otherwise, why would they take that risk? So for Aussie dollar, again, CPI, volatility to the upside, testing the high again, looking for the sales. I'll be looking for the sales for next week. Just a couple of things to clarify. Four hours looking pretty good. Yeah, everything's looking pretty strong for Aussie dollar for next week. So this is typical. As a nice little lesson as well, and people in Falcon will know, when you've got a lot of volume sat here and you've got a high and price doesn't commit to the downside, it creates what we call an M structure. And when we get this M structure and there's a huge gap between this, when we reject off of this, again, I mean, you guessed it, we'll look for that continue continuation pattern that doesn't work. Right, we'll look for a continuation pattern and look for that to sell off. So very similar, very similar structures. And then of course we will have things to identify on the lower time frames, like the one hour, the 15 minute, and the five minute to execute on it. So there is a little insight for Aussie dollar for next week. But as you can see as well, like I mentioned earlier, just because you see something don't work doesn't mean that the trade was taken there is invalidation criteria in which that we follow. So we might look at something and it just might not satisfy the criteria. And that will actually, because of our in-depth understanding of these structures, we will stay out of a trade. But a novice or a newbie, they'll just take everything and be like, oh, it's, it's not working for me. It's because you don't know what you're doing yet. And I wouldn't expect anyone that doesn't know what they're doing to make money. It's as simple as that. So keep your eye out. If you want to follow the Rewired IG, you have up until the 20th until Beyond. I'm so excited for Beyond Rewired to come out. We have our very first in-person, well, our very first Rewired meetup on the 21st, which is going to be in London. So for those of you that are in Rewired, of course, many of you that are going to be there, I can't wait for that. Traders with all different trading systems, different trading strategies, ICT, SMC, Elliott Wave, you name it, are going to be there. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys in person. Honestly, I can't wait. And it's going to be a breath of fresh air to actually have a trading meetup that is not 
uh, my strategy over your strategy. It's just going to be so good to meet those traders and just have genuine conversations of seeing people level up and that have been able to take the rewired principles and apply it to the way they trade the markets. I'm so looking forward to that. The thing is, the people that have the most back and forth or beef with strategy that trade these different systems, they would make more money if they were in rewired because it's happening. So uh, it's it's not about whether you think it's important or not. Right? You can have that belief and think, well, I'll just do this. Fine. But your own ego is stopping you making more money. So if you want to make more money, get your mindset right. This is the formula. This is the recipe. So I'm really looking forward to that. But you have up until the 20th of midnight. So if you have any questions, feel free to message us. You can message me on my IG, the Falcon IG, the Rewired IG. If you have other questions about your approach, how you can... Uh, work your way through it what would be what's involved whatever the questions that come to your head you've got about six days so i would gather the funds and i would get involved It'd be one of the best investments you make hands down what time frame do you look for entry so weekly daily four hour one hour 15 five now there's certain criteria in which that i would look for lower time frame so I can't just say to you, I only execute on the five, but the mistrade within here was on the five, right? So the, the 12, 12.5% 12 position in here, that was on the five minute. Now there's going to be certain scenarios which I'll go, right, I'll trade it on the one hour. Again, I have a trading plan, stick to the trading plan. I know when to use the 15 minute, when to use the five minute, when to use the one hour. So again, I could show you one trade and go, right, five minute time frame, use it there. You're still not, not gonna you're still not gonna know how without the context when to use the five, when to use the fifteen minute. But again, we have that all in the membership. Is a reason why we have AFT, which is advanced Falcon Trader. This is the AFT section. This trade within here, AFT. So top end that would have been roughly about eighteen percent. On the lower end conservative, easily should have walked away for those that got it on the funded capital, about twelve percent. So decent twelve percent position. Again, forecasted in advance. Simple. Simple execution of things that are happening repetitively. You are very welcome. You, you should have learned a lot. I mean, I've gone into probably more depth than what I should have, but you, you should have learned a lot. But again, knowing knowledge and then knowing how to apply it, that happens from having that weekly mentorship every single week. Boom, boom, boom. The repetition, the experience of it, that's how you progress quickly, not by me telling you oh this is where i got in and you think you've cracked it it's not that easy right it might look simple but it's not that easy the framework is there and if you commit to yourself you'll do well just like rc rc is not an overnight success she just passed our in-house fund and she's applied herself webinar she wakes up at 2 a.m to jump on a webinar she doesn't care right this is full commitment so there's no coincidence that she's been able to get to the next level so again massive congrats to rc and everyone else that's passed on funding recently we have so much more to come this quarter believe you me i said this q3 would be success never doubt my instincts i've been doing this for 15 years so i know things for a reason repetitive cycles happen in the market and i know when money's stepping in right guys have an incredible weekend i hope you learned some lots of value from this send us a message into the chat after leave a comment what you enjoyed about it if you want to see more content on funding firms payouts splits chart patterns whatever you want right let us know we'd absolutely love to know we're approaching the 100k mark on the channel as well so i appreciate all of the support from day one it means a lot to us and we're glad to be a a beacon in this space of positivity be a beacon in this space of sharing the truth about the markets and not all the glamorous bs that doesn't actually help you you might find it entertaining elsewhere however it's not really going to progress you so i'd rather give you the strong hard messages that you need in order knowing that that's actually what's going to change your life none of the fluff and rubbish that will be here today gone tomorrow this channel is going to keep growing the movement's going to keep growing our infrastructure is going to keep growing and we're going to keep aiming to provide the best education in the space and that's our goal simple as that enjoy the rest of your weekend thank you for tuning in and i'll catch you in the next episode take care everyone peace out appreciate you guys